In the Boss Kingdom, the main protagonist, Prince Boji, born deaf and mute, struggles with physical weakness and is looked down upon by his people. Despite being the rightful first prince, he is overshadowed by his physically stronger half-brother, Prince Daida. Their father, King Boss, renowned as one of the era's strongest kings, is nearing the end of his life, hastening the need to choose his successor. Boji, the son of Boss's late first wife, is determined to prove himself and aspire to be a great king, but faces skepticism due to his disabilities. Daida, the son of the second wife, Healing, is favored by many for his strength. Prince Boji, while playing on a hill, encounters Cage, a member of a shadow clan known for their loyalty but decimated due to treason allegations. Cage, intending to rob Boji, is surprised when Boji willingly gives up his possessions and returns to the kingdom. Boji, deaf and mute, faces ridicule from the kingdom's residents. King Boss, trying to bolster Boji's image, arranges sword training with Damis, a royal trainer. However, Boji's physical limitations prevent him from matching his brother Daida's strength and skill in combat, leading to frequent losses and injuries. Despite Boji's struggles, Cage, secretly following him, offers comfort after a particularly harsh defeat. Following King Boss's death, a surprising revelation from his will names Boji as his successor. This decision shocks Daida, who expected to inherit the throne. Despite his frustration, a magic mirror gifted by King Boss assures Daida he will ultimately become king. This prophecy fulfills itself when Healing and the royal commanders revote, leading to Daida's ascension as the new king, leaving Boji heartbroken. Soon after, Boji learns that his friend Cage has ventured into the wild. Determined to find him, Boji sets out with two bodyguards, Domes and Hokoro, after overcoming initial resistance from Healing, his stepmother. Despite favoring her biological son Daida, Healing secretly worries about Boji's safety. Meanwhile, Daida, now king, faces challenges in establishing his rank among the world's kings, navigating the responsibilities and expectations of his new role. Haunted by fears of Boji reclaiming the throne, he follows the magic mirror's advice to extract power from their late father's body. Meanwhile, Boji's journey takes a perilous turn at the gates of hell, a hot crater he's led to by Domes. In a treacherous twist, Domes, following Daida's orders, attempts to kill Boji by pushing him into the crater. However, Boji's other bodyguard, Hokoro, intervenes, resulting in a violent confrontation that leaves Domes maimed. Boji survives, shielded by Cage, who had been secretly stowed in his bag, sent by Babin to protect him. Cage then guides Boji to seek training in the underworld, using a hidden path at the gates of hell. Their journey, however, is abruptly interrupted by mysterious smoke that renders them unconscious, leading to their capture and transportation to the Underworld Kingdom's royal palace. In a dramatic turn, Daida attempts a ritual using King Boss's frozen corpse to gain his strength through a magic potion. However, doubting the process, Daida discards the potion. Just then, Apias, a royal commander loyal to King Boss and Boji, confronts Daida with intent to kill him. But the magic mirror, embodying Muranho, a confidant of King Boss, intervenes. Muranho, who empowered Apias, compels him to serve her wishes. Apias renders Daida unconscious and forces him to consume the potion, which unexpectedly revives King Boss's soul in Daida's body. Meanwhile, Boji and Cage, recovering from their blackout, are brought to King Desha, the world's second strongest king. Curious about Boji's abilities, Desha arranges for him to battle one of his commanders. Boji's agility allows him to dodge every attack, Yet this fails to impress King Desha, leading to Boji and Cage being banished from his realm. Boji and Cage, upon leaving King Desha's palace, are informed that Desha's younger brother, Despay, could potentially train Boji. Excited, they seek out Despay, who agrees to train Boji only after receiving a substantial payment. Initially skeptical about Boji's potential, due to his weak physique, Despay commits to finding a training method that suits Boji. The training pays off, as Boji soon demonstrates his progress by effortlessly destroying a large stone. The story then reveals the reason behind Boji's small stature and lack of strength, a pact made between King Boss, Moranho, and a demon. To gain extraordinary power, King Boss agreed to sacrifice aspects of his life, including having a child who would inherit the power drain. Back in the kingdom, Healing, believing Boji to be dead, orders the execution of Domes and Hokuro. However, King Boss, now inhabiting Daida's body, intervenes, revealing that Boji is alive and training. Domes and Hokuro are spared from execution but banished. Upon realizing that the person before her is not Daida but King Boss, Healing inquires about her son, only to be shocked into fainting when told Daida has disappeared. Meanwhile, Moranho seeks permission to go to the underworld to amass more forces to augment King Boss's power. Healing, upon waking, confronts King Boss in Daida's body, demanding the return of her son. 
she hears Daida's voice from within Boss's chest, indicating that Daida is trapped inside. As she attempts to free him, the head guard, loyal to King Boss, intervenes. Meanwhile, Boji completes his training with Dispa and is now equipped to confront his adversaries. Cage, initially skeptical due to Boji's small sword, learns from Dispa that Boji's strength lies in evading attacks and targeting opponents' weak points. Grateful for Dispa's guidance, Boji and Cage prepare to return to the palace, though Boji harbors fears of betrayal, mistakenly believing healing was behind the assassination attempt. Recalling healing's past affection, he decides to face his fears in return. Concurrently, King Desha learns of his brother Alkin's escape from the underworld prison. Alkin had been imprisoned due to a pact with a demon for immortality. Discovering Alkin's destination to Boss's kingdom, King Desha mobilizes his forces to take control of the palace. Upon arrival, Alkin and other underworld prisoners seize King Boss, confining him in the dungeon, and usurp control of Boss's palace. As Boji and Cage, accompanied by underworld warriors sent by King Desha, head towards Boss's palace. They are unaware of the warrior's ulterior motive to seize the kingdom. En route, they encounter Alkin, who had been rampaging through the city. Remembering Dispa's warning, the underworld warrior commander urgently directs Boji to protect Queen Hilling at the palace. Upon arrival, Boji finds his two-headed snake companion being attacked by Gigan, a giant. Demonstrating newfound strength, Boji subdues Gigan and requests Hilling's help to heal the snake. Hilling, out of healing potions, is aided by Cage, who provides additional bottles. While Hilling tends to the snake and injured dogs, Boji successfully fends off a revived Gigan, earning his loyalty and that of the dogs, former companions of the underworld prisoners. Informed by the two-headed snake, Boji hurries to the dungeon to thwart the underworld boss's entry into the palace. Meanwhile, during a fierce battle, Alkin and his army are unexpectedly struck by magical lightnings sent by King Desha, leading to Alkin's defeat and capture by the Spey, who was prepared with ropes for such an event. As the conflict at Boss's palace intensifies, King Desha and his underworld army arrive through an underground gate. Boji and Gigan, now at the dungeon, are confronted by King Desha, who reveals his intent to capture Miranjo, the orchestrator of the chaos and the one responsible for releasing underworld lords. Gigan, fearful of returning to the underworld prison, attacks King Desha. Boji intervenes to prevent Desha's retaliation. At this critical moment, King Desha receives a telepathic message from Despa, advising him against battling Boji and suggesting a strategic retreat to focus on defeating Miranjo and the associated cursed demon when they are isolated. Acknowledging this advice, King Desha offers Gigan a position in the underworld army and withdraws with his forces after Gigan accepts the offer with Boji's blessing. Simultaneously, Miranjo, now in the custody of underworld prisoners, telepathically communicates with Aoken, pleading for rescue. Aoken, responding to her call, frees himself and rushes to the palace. There, he encounters Boji and Cage, leading to an inevitable confrontation. Despite Boji's efforts, Aoken's immortality renders him invulnerable. As the situation becomes dire, Cage transforms into a giant shadow, engulfing Aoken. Aoken, resurrecting himself, fatally wounds Cage. Subsequently, he lethally attacks Boji, who is already weakened, leaving both Cage and Boji dead. The story then shifts to King Boss in his prison, where he reminisces about his past with Miranjo. Daida, trapped within Boss's heart, is privy to these memories. Miranjo's origins trace back to Hemora, a land of magicians known for their defiance against the gods. Boss, having once sought refuge in Hemora, joined forces with Miranjo's mother to aid the Hemora people against the gods' tyranny. However, a betrayal within Hemora leads to a brutal attack, resulting in the killing of Miranjo's mother and the horrific mutilation of Miranjo herself. Enraged, Boss exacts vengeance on the traitors. He then leaves the country with Miranjo, gradually developing romantic feelings for her. Seeking unparalleled strength, Boss encounters a demon and strikes a deal to become the world's strongest human, sacrificing his longevity and his firstborn strength. As Boss's life nears its end, Miranjo orchestrates a plan for his resurrection. She ensures Boss marries Hilling and fathers Daida, who is predestined to serve as the vessel for Boss's soul, a plan meticulously crafted by Miranjo from the outset. In the midst of this tumultuous saga, Daida, witnessing his father's past with Miranjo, grapples with mixed emotions. He's angry at King Boss for the manipulations and sacrifices made but empathizes with Miranjo's tragic past. Daida resolves to protect Miranjo, now seeing her as a victim rather than a villain. Miranjo, deeply affected by Boji's death at the hands of Alkin, abandons her mirror form and inhabits a soldier's body to revive Boji and Cage. As she performs the healing, Despair witnesses glimpses of her sorrowful history, which he later shares with Boji urging him to act judiciously. Boji and Cage, 
miraculously revived by Miranjo's intervention, prepare to confront Alkin once more. In an unexpected turn, King Boss appears, channeling Daida's healing power to restore everyone. Boss then faces Alkin in combat, and despite Alkin's sword prowess, Boss overwhelms him with his mace. However, Alkin's immortality poses a challenge, prompting Boss to devise a strategy to permanently incapacitate him. Boss crushes Alkin's body into fragments and entombs these remnants under a massive boulder, effectively preventing his regeneration. King Boss, filled with remorse, seeks out Miranjo in the magic mirror to apologize for her past suffering. Expressing his enduring love, he vows to join her in the afterlife upon his demise, unaware that Miranjo's soul is barred from the afterlife due to her pact-breaking resurrection of Boss. King Boss then declares his intent to eliminate anyone attempting to usurp Dida's body or resurrect him. Boji, motivated by love for his brother, courageously confronts King Boss, backed by Damas, Babin, Dorsh, and Apias. Boji intervenes to prevent Damas' attack on King Boss, explaining that only he can combat Boss without harming Dida. The ensuing battle between Boji and King Boss is intense. Initially, Boji focuses on evading attacks while seeking Boss's vulnerability. He eventually identifies and exploits this weakness, disarming Boss's mace and striking him down. As Boss attempts to destroy Miranjo to free Daida, Boji intervenes, fearing harm to Miranjo. Miranjo, witnessing Boss's despair and Boji's compassion, decides to surrender. She requests Boji to destroy her magic mirror, an act that would release Daida from Boss's control. After Boji shatters the magic mirror, both King Boss's and Miranjo's souls ascend. This summons the giant red devil, bound by a past pact, who swoops in to claim Miranjo's soul. Miranjo, regretful, apologizes to King Boss for not being able to join him in the afterlife. However, King Desha intervenes, striking the Red Devil with a thunderbolt, which is followed by a decisive blow from the commander of the Underworld Army, decapitating the demon. In this chaos, Despa negotiates with the Red Demon, offering to return its head in exchange for a wish. Before Despa can articulate his desire, Daida steps in with his own request, asking the demon to resurrect Miranjo. The demon complies, and Miranjo is brought back to life, fulfilling Daida's vow to protect her. This turn of events delights Despa, who graciously allows Daida's wish to supersede his own. The scene is further warmed by Hilling's joy at seeing both her children safe, embracing them in a heartfelt reunion. With Miranjo's return and her vow to reform, the palace denizens forgive her past misdeeds, symbolizing a fresh start. In a gesture of humility and respect, Daida kneels before Boji, offering him the throne. Boji is thus reinstated as the king of Boss Kingdom, welcomed and celebrated by all. Cage, feeling his role in Boji's journey is complete, decides to depart from Boji's side in the palace. As Boji's reign as king begins, he is haunted by the absence of his friend Cage, who has mysteriously disappeared. Despite his diligent and fair rule, Boji feels an emptiness without Cage. Hilling, recognizing Boji's longing, encourages him to seek out his freedom and happiness with Cage. Acknowledging the genuine friendship and joy Cage brought to Boji's life, motivated by Hilling's words and his own dechet for Cage's companionship, Boji makes a significant decision. He renounces his kingship, passing the title back to Daida, and embarks on a quest to find Cage. After days of searching, Boji finally reunites with Cage. Overcome with emotion, Boji cries, while Cage initially reacts with anger at Boji's abdication. However, Boji informs Cage that he will wander and build an empire of his own one day. And this brings the anime to an end. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on another video. Until next time, take care.